You know those sci-fi movies where the characters are on some kind of alien planet and you can see multiple moons or even other planets in the sky? Well, those are kind of one of my favorite things ever. So I decided to make this and now I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's get started. Real quick disclaimer before we get started. To create this scene, I used both the 3D system in DaVinci Resolve and Magic Mask. So if you want to do this the same way I did, you'll have to be using DaVinci Resolve Studio. If you're in the free version, you can either click the link in the description to get yourself a studio license key, or you can use 2D elements and manual rotoscoping to get a similar effect. Cool? Cool. The first thing I did was snag a piece of footage from Artlist, which is where I get all of my music, sound effects, and stock footage from. They're not sponsoring this video, but there is a link in the description that'll give you two free months on top of an annual subscription. Anyway, once I downloaded the footage and brought it into DaVinci Resolve, I added it to my timeline, selected the clip, and headed to the Fusion page. Once in the Fusion page, the first thing I needed to do was track the footage. Now, normally when working with 3D elements, I would use the camera tracker, but since the camera was facing the same direction for the entire shot, and there wasn't a whole lot of movement, the basic tracker was enough to get the job done. So I used the basic tracker to track the footage. Then in the operation tab, I changed the operation to match move and the merge to foreground over background. Once that was done, it was time to build out the 3D scene, which consisted of three planets and a moon, all of which were built using the shape 3D node. First, I added a render 3D node and connected it to the foreground input of the tracker. Next, with the renderer node selected, I enabled lighting and shadows so my spotlight would interact with my shapes. From there, I added a Merge 3D node and connected that to the Renderer 3D node. Quick note, if you're new to working with 3D in DaVinci Resolve, the two things you will always need are a Merge 3D node and a Renderer 3D node. There will be a link to a video in the description that's a little more beginner friendly if you wanna learn more. Next, it was time to build out my first planet. So I added a Shape 3D node to my Merge 3D node and changed the shape to Sphere. Then I added a camera and a spotlight to my Merge 3D node and adjusted the position and scale of the sphere and the location of both the camera and the spotlight until the sphere was roughly where I wanted it to be in the shot. Now obviously I didn't want my planet to be just a solid white ball so I needed to add a material. To do this I added a replace material 3D node to my shape 3D node. Then in the effects library I went to templates, fusion, shaders and chose the marble shader and connected it to the material material input of the replace material node. From there, I expanded the marble group and adjusted the material until I had a look that I was happy with. Real quick, I know I'm blowing through this, so if you want a beginner's guide to 3D, make sure you check out that video linked in the description. Once I was done making the planet the way I wanted, I created a group out of my shape 3D, replaced material 3D, and marble material and labeled it red planet. Then it was time to move on to the blue planet. Since I had already built out the base of my 3D scene and created one of the planets, adding a second planet was just a matter of copying and pasting the red planet group, connecting the copy to my Merge 3D node and renaming it blue planet. Then in the transform tab of the shape 3D node, I repositioned and scaled the planet to where I wanted it to be, after that, I needed to change the material and the texture. To do this, I first deleted the marble texture group and the replace material node. Then I added a blend node to the shape 3D node, which is used to add materials and textures to FBX models. Then I added a bump map node to the blend node and a fast noise to the bump map node. From there, with the bump map nodes selected, I changed the image type to height map, the filters to size three, and raised the height scale slightly. Then I adjusted the fast noise until I got a texture I was happy with. Finally, I selected the blend node and changed the color to a light blue and I was ready to move on to creating the green planet. Once again, I copied and pasted the red planet group, connected it to the merge 3D node and renamed it green planet. Then I used the transform tab in the shape 3D node to position and scale the planet. From there, I deleted the marble shader group and replaced it with the brushed metal shader. To get the brushed metal to look a little less metal, I selected 
the reflect base node, changed the strength variability to constant, and brought the constant strength all the way up to one. Then, in the color corrector node, I changed the color to green and increased the contrast slightly. With that done, it was time to move on to the red planet's moon. Since the moon was going to resemble the blue planet the most, I copied and pasted the blue planet group, connected it to the merge node, renamed it Red Planet Moon, and once again scaled and positioned. Then, in the Blend node, I changed the color to a light gray. Finally, I tweaked the fast noise slightly so it wouldn't look exactly the same as the blue planet. Now that I had all my planets in place, it was time to animate, which I did by keyframing the position and rotation of all my Shape 3D nodes so that they moved throughout the scene. To finish off the 3D portion of the shot, I added a color corrector node in between my render 3D node and my tracker node and tweaked the saturation and the brightness to better match the rest of the shot. Then I added a blur node after the color corrector node so I can match the blur of the planets with the blur of the background. So now that we had the 3D portion of the shot complete, we had a new problem to solve. The planets were covering up the actor and they were in front of the mountain in the background. To fix this, I copied and pasted my original footage and merged it over my tracker node. Then I added a polygon, connected the center to my tracker position so it would move with the footage and drew a polygon mask around the ground portion of the scene. This placed the planets behind the mountain. From there, I added a color corrector in between the footage and the merge and adjusted the hue slider until the grass was purple. At this point, I still had the actor covered up by the planets and I had a new problem. The portion of my actor that was inside of my polygon was now tinted purple. I'm gonna fix both of those shortly, but before I do that, I want to finish blending the planets in with the atmosphere a little bit more. To do this, I connected a fast noise node to the composition, used a rectangle mask to limit the fast noise to the sky portion of the scene, brought down the blend of the fast noise a bit, and slightly raised the seethe rate to give it a little bit of motion. From there, it was time to fix the problems with my actor. To do this, I once again placed a copy of my original footage in the composition, then I placed a magic mask node after the copy of my footage and used it to mask out my actor. Now my actor was back to the original color and he was no longer covered up by the planet. And I gotta say, even though Magic Mask works great and processes faster in the color page, I found it to somehow be much more accurate in Fusion. Have you guys had the same experience? Let me know in the comments. Now, I could have left the composition as it was, but I wanted to add a little bit more of an atmosphere to really sell the alien planet feel. So I added another fast noise node to the composition, brought down the blend quite a bit, and slightly raised the seethe rate to give off a misty, foggy look. From there, I headed into the color page to grade the shot using the Dehancer plugin for DaVinci Resolve, which has quickly become my favorite film emulation plugin plugin ever. I'll be doing a full review on Dehancer soon, but for now, if you want to check it out, it will be linked below. And if you use the code Lipman at checkout, you'll get 10% off and you'll be helping out the channel. So, you know, win-win. And there you have it. A simple shot of a man walking through a field turns into an alien planet with the whole planets in the sky effect that I probably love a little too much. Now, like I said, I know I blew through the 3D portion of this video pretty quickly, and I apologize if you felt a little bit lost, but I did make a beginner's guide to 3D in DaVinci Resolve to help you get caught up. To watch that, just click right here, and until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.